Hi, I'm Meg Major with Progressive Grocer Magazine, and we're here today with Rick Jurgens, Chairman and CEO of hy Inc. Rick, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to be with you. First question I'd like to toss out at you would be very general in terms of what you consider to be the most important trends, consumer and industry, influencing retailing today. You know, there are a number of trends. If you look at the environment, uh, the economy is having an effect on consumer shopping trends and habits. A lot of different things that are, are playing a factor. Um, I see it as more of a market by market trend and our company is set up with a very decentralized uh, position which helps us a great deal. And the trends are different. Uh, if you're looking at rural communities in the Midwest today, it's dramatically different than the urban settings. And uh, so we, we have to respond on a market to market, town by town basis. And uh, it's actually a lot of fun right now. It's a dynamic time to be in the food industry. Is there any one particular trend you can cite in terms of a regional difference, perhaps organics being uh, popular, sustainable? I think organics are beyond a trend. I think organics are a part of the main business uh, that we're in today. Our consumers uh, demand organics. It's probably the only uh, growth category in our company that's grown double digits for 10 years and we anticipate that will continue. So that's pretty consistent within each of the markets? It's virtually every single community we do business in. Uh, people are migrating to natural and organic products in a big way. Hy-Vee has taken a leadership role in the areas of health and wellness in such programs as NuVal and in-store dietitians. Could you describe a bit about how this translates into your future goals, objectives, and further leadership areas. We're very proud of our leadership in health and wellness at hy -Vee. And we really believe it helps us fulfill our mission, which is to make lives easier, healthier, and happier. And using the programs like NuVal to provide information to our customers. We don't believe it's our job to tell people what to eat, when to eat it, and how much to eat. But it is our job to make it easy for them to make decisions that relate to their health. And we have a population today that is wanting to take an active role in their own health. We feel it's a responsibility of ours and frankly of the entire food industry. That's why we're also involved with the Healthy Weight Commitment and a number of other industry initiatives to try and make a difference in the fight on obesity, in the health issues confronting our consumers as well as the rest of the country. In terms of the in-store dietitian aspects, I've really heard lots of consumer uh, compliments around the country from um, you know many of the markets that Hy-Vee operates saying what a what a benefit that is. How had that come to pass in terms of just that key objective within your whole strategy? I believe Hy-Vee has somewhere north of 145 dietitians at store level today and the exciting thing about it is it bubbled up in the stores as opposed to coming from the corporate office down and the response from our customers was so great and so appreciative of having information that they heretofore didn't have quick and easy access to and having someone that they could trust to give them support whether they're trying to be proactive uh, to avoid disease or, or some sort of uh, uh, major illness or they're reacting to some disease state that they already have such as diabetes or hypertension uh, or other types of uh, uh, concerns that they may have in their diet, such as allergies. Well, I think that's terrific that, um, you know, that's lending such a dynamic component to the store, store piece of the business as well for consumers. Along those lines, what is important to note about Hy-Vee's newer concept stores? Anything in terms of design elements and or departmental additions? Well, in coordinating our health and wellness initiatives, the first thing we did with our newest format is to expand the pharmacy and make it more clinical uh, and then we typically have an office for the dietitian right near the pharmacy and if we have an in-store clinic it's right near there as well. Uh, also as you look at our fresh departments, produce is even more front and center and a bigger first impression than it used to be. Floral has moved to the other side of the checkout. It's always been at the front of the store but now on the other side of the checkout to make it a little more uh, inviting and convenient for consumers uh, as they leave. Uh, 
Uh, those are the bigger changes that are, are going on right now. We're very excited about the new formats and they're working very well for us. All these questions seem to flow within a certain context, not, uh, not surprisingly about consumers and closer connections with them, um, which is a mandate before all retailers these days. What are the general components of Hy-Vee's consumer-centric focus? The major component of our consumer initiatives is something that we've had for 80 years. Uh, we are proud of our 80 years of keeping the customer as the center of everything that we do. In every initiative that we implement, in every problem that we address, we always say what's going to be best for our customers. And so whether we're looking at social media and some of the things we're doing with instant emails for deals, or it's, it's the store layout, it's the product offerings, it always comes back to what does the customer want and what does the customer need. Again, our autonomous nature allows us to be responsive right down to the customer, as opposed to at a sort of a macro level. I think once you ask the questions of consumers, they're so quick to, to give you um, feedback, be it on Facebook, which we're really tracking a lot at Progressive Grocer, to the, the dynamic nature that that's really helped um, so many retailers, you know, have a dialogue with customers. It is. Certainly it's, it's a challenge because everyone is trying to figure out what's the best way to communicate with your customers. And it seems as though almost every one of them has a different need. So it, it creates an exciting opportunity for us to find the best way to communicate almost on an individual basis. Uh, having said that, we also love the fact that it, the modern communication vehicles provide customers with a, a, a more confident way to communicate with us when they have a concern. And we don't want people unhappy with hy V. And so I, I receive emails every single day from customers and so do the rest of our officers and store directors and other leaders in our company. Uh, we think that's a great opportunity for us to fix problems and move forward with even happier customers. Switching here somewhat into the role of private label growth and the Companion Balancing Act required um, to support national brands. Well, the, the entire private label uh, growth pattern that we've seen over the last couple of years when the economy has been at its worst uh, is a sort of a just a natural evolution of supply and demand as uh, people's finances were squeezed, they turned to private label. Uh, and, and when you add to that, that private labels across the industry have become better over time, uh, more responsive to consumers, and we think in our company uh, we, we've done a good job of that. So natural growth and evolution of private label has, has uh, worked very well. Having said that, it also creates a natural need for manufacturers and national brands to react, and they have. And we have, with some of our best national brands partners, had some of our biggest increases over the last couple of years because we've worked together to find ways to grow their business and ours simultaneously. Very well said. And um, indeed, it, it was almost the private label snowball had been picking up steam before the you know economic downturn, I think. So it was a, a um, well-timed. It was a perfect storm for the private indeed. label industry. In terms of speaking of suppliers, what would you consider to be among the biggest opportunities for suppliers that serve hy V? You know, in our company, I think we do have a decentralized structure with our stores having a great deal of power, whether it's in metro markets or even in individual towns. And the, the manufacturers who seem to do the best embrace our model. The ones who struggle with hy V fight it. They want to be able to make one call at the corporate office and it's done. It's not always that easy in our, in our program. Uh, we do have manufacturers that get it very well and they do extremely well with hy V. Uh, I do believe that the uh, autonomous nature of our store directors does give our vendor partners a unique opportunity to almost target area by area what they want to accomplish and to get it done.